All right. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Nikki Acosta, and thank you for tuning in to Designing an OpenStack Summit Session Submission for Success. How is that for some alliteration? So we are super honored uh, to be presenting to you guys today. Uh, my name is Nikki. I am an individual member of the OpenStack Foundation. I also work for Cisco. I'm also part of the women of OpenStack. And I am really honored to be joined by two amazing women today, Ann Gentle and Diane Mueller. So Ann, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, thanks, Nikki. I'm Ann Gentle, and um, I wear a couple hats in OpenStack. I serve as the Documentation uh, Program Technical Lead, and I also serve on the Technical Committee. And I'm pretty excited to talk more about proposals and presentations and, and getting more of us out there. So, And now, Diane. I'm Diane Mueller. I'm the Director of Community Development at Red Hat for OpenShift, and I have been a participant in the OpenStack um, world since the days of Essex, and um, hopefully some of the tips and tricks that I have up my sleeve for getting my submissions selected um, for the OpenStack things will help all of you today. So I'm really pleased to be here, and also um, hopefully you'll use these tips to get successful presentations in at lots of tech conferences, including Red Hat Summit, Dev Nation, and lots of other things. So um, happy to be here today. Thanks. Super. So let's get right into it, and let's talk about why we're really here. First, uh, this is sponsored by the Women of OpenStack. And the Women of OpenStack is a group of women, obviously, uh, that get together at all of the OpenStack Summit and some of the other tech events. And so during the last summit, uh, the women of OpenStack got together and they wanted to pick one thing uh, that would help out the community and help other women within the OpenStack community. So one of the things that came up is that everyone there agreed that there, we wanted to see more women at the OpenStack Summit and at tech conferences in general. And so here we are. We wanted to give a presentation not just to cover kind of the OpenStack Summit, but speaking about uh, OpenStack at other conferences, and spread knowledge. And so if we throw around three-letter acronyms, we should also define them. We know that many of the women of OpenStack have only been to one summit or are planning to go to Vancouver for their first summit. So we wanted to get a good jump start on that experience. And we wanted to open it up to men as well who wanted some pro tips on how to not only design uh, a good presentation, but uh, to have some confidence in delivering that presentation as well. So the OpenStack Summit, obviously all this information uh, is on the OpenStack.org site, but we're super excited to be heading to Vancouver uh, this May. The, the way that the event is structured is going to be kind of similar to how it was in Paris. And so in the context of this presentation, what we're really talking about here today is going to be submitting a good presentation uh, proposal for the actual summit uh, component, not the design session. So the design session is, uh, takes place with separate uh, process altogether with all the developers that get together and kind of map out uh, the future, uh, what the OpenStack code base actually looks like. So we hope that you are all individual members. The Board of Directors election is going on now. Uh, there's some bylaw voting that's going on now. Uh, it is absolutely free to join the OpenStack Foundation. So if you are interested, head on over to OpenStack.org, register, and we hope that you will be able to make it to Vancouver. Uh, similar to last year, I think almost every single presentation uh, in Paris was recorded and is now made available uh, on the YouTube channel for OpenStack, and we expect the same this year. So not only do you get a chance to speak to the people at the OpenStack Summit if your talk is chosen, but you also have the ability to have that video as a way to share your message after the summit. Let's talk about the proposal system a little bit. Uh, right now, the window is open, and this is when everyone submits their, their session ideas. Uh, that could be a hands-on lab, it could be a number of different uh, community topics, uh, workshops, those kinds of things. So once you uh, are an individual member, you create a profile, and you can go to openstock.org and submit your session. And the sessions are all then collected, and then the voting window opens a few weeks later. Now once that voting window is open, 
Uh, all of the voting will take place online. Everybody will have a chance to review all of the sessions and either vote them up or vote them down. And this is a, a pretty neat process. Uh, it, it can be kind of, kind of time consuming. One thing I'll note about the voting process is that in the last summit there were over 1,100 submissions for just about 100 talks. So even if your session doesn't make it, don't be discouraged. You know, the rate of rejection is quite high. doesn't mean that your session uh, topic wasn't good or that you didn't get enough votes. It just means that by sheer number of uh, submissions that were sent that uh, yours didn't quite make it this time. Uh, once the voting takes place, there's still another thing that happens kind of behind the scenes, and that is uh, the track process. So each track, you know, be it community, be it enterprise, be it startup, will have a track lead. And the track lead's job is to look at the votes and assemble the sessions and put them into the appropriate slots. Now there's some interesting things that can happen here. Track chairs have the ability to uh, basically look at voting. If your company is stuffing the, the votes, in other words, if you know, you're getting all your coworkers to just vote for your session, the track chairs actually have the ability to see that. So they may, in fact, uh, choose to vote down your talk or not include it. If there are several topics that seem redundant, uh, but they are along the same lines, the track chairs also have the ability to put you on a panel with other folks who have submitted a similar session talk. So the track chairs are really responsible for making sure that the track is represented well, that the time slots uh, work with everybody's schedules, and that they're really uh, in the best interest of the community. So submissions, voting, then tracks, Track chairs also then notify participants uh, if their talks are accepted or rejected. There's one other thing uh, that I'd interject too is that sometimes the track chairs do a little bit of horse trading, and um, if your talk <laughs> you submit it into a track and it's more appropriate for networking than it is community management or something, there's a little bit of that back and forth to get a, a good uh, agenda for the day um, or the day and a half that that, that part of the summit is going on. That's a great point, and, you know, Anne. Yeah, this is Anne, and I would also just interject, you know, don't be shy about promoting. I always get a little nervous around voting time, and it's natural, and you don't know whether you're putting yourself out there, but it's fine. And, and really, the track chairs are the ones you can trust to get the right talks into the right slots and help you, you know, get your talk just right. So anyway, the system really is built to have community involvement, you know, with the voting and that's the participation level. But it's still, they're putting together a really good conference. And that's, you know, that's the tweet early, tweet often, but then trust the track chairs. So, and, and yeah, and both Diane and, and Nikki have been track chairs, so. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> and if, if you yeah. folks find out who you are, you might get a few phone calls. <laughs> they're secret. Uh, I didn't mean to call them out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, Anne, do you want to talk about audience analysis and how that breaks down? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I've i been around OpenStack um, for quite a while now. Rackspace uh, hired me and a community manager as, as a couple of their first two hires for OpenStack. And so um, this will be my 10th uh, summit. And I just want to like put in a couple of stories about what it looks like when you're there. And, and this photo is of a keynote session, and so I don't want to intimidate people. Um, typically for the kind of proposals you're writing, there are less than 100 people in the room, not 3,000 like this one shows. Um, but I also want to talk about how um, more than half of the audience is new to OpenStack, and so they you know, may not know everything about OpenStack, and may not, may be there to learn and meet other people. So you know, keep that in, in mind. Um, I, I think in the, for the Atlanta Summit, there were like 700 people who signed up in the week prior to the summit. So just realize that a lot of it has to do with what region are we in, people suddenly realize that they can make those travel plans and they are going to get excited about OpenStack because it's right in their backyard, right? So um, the, the, the key is to not make knowledge assumptions, but I don't want women especially to feel like you have to 
propose a beginner's track thing, be ready to tackle something deeply technical. Don't limit yourself. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, that we can't, it's not fair to make assumptions of, of what people know when they come into your talk. So, um, but yeah, we can look at the next slide where we really break down, um, you know, the last two summits. Um, Paris was the most recent in the fall, and Atlanta was the spring before. So, you know, Paris um, definitely saw an uptick in the number of people from Europe who were able to attend, um, and it was our first time in Europe. So, um, but I also want to point out, you know, so that's talking to the first-time attendees, uh, but also look at these stats, a fourth of the attendees are developers and self-identify that way. Um, and so they're going to be attending these sessions, they're going to be voting on the proposals, even if your time is split with a design summit. Um, you know, in Paris, that was the way the week went for me, was very much, um, you know, in the, in the design summit sessions, while also um, I got a proposal accepted um, to talk about developer support. Um, and there are still very much um, the CXO level people there um, looking at OpenStack strategically. Um, and I think we're seeing a steady stream of operators, the people running OpenStack day to day, um, so don't, don't feel like overwhelmingly it's going to be OpenStack contributors. Um, it's people, you know, making OpenStack work in production. And honestly, you know, the Atlanta Summit was 65% first-time attendees. That blew me out. I just couldn't even believe it. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is just kind of a, a general overview of um, for any, any conference that you're going to submit a proposal to, make sure you understand the format. And, and I talk to people all the time, and it's like OpenStack is really a very unique format. Um, but these are general guidelines, right? Um, make sure that your title is something that's you can remember, but doesn't get too cutesy. Um, you want to set out the problem and tell what people will learn um, from your proposal. You want to make sure you match the proposal to whatever is being requested. And so not only match it to the overall conference and the overall themes there, but also match it to, if I'm going to do a 90-minute workshop, my outline had better show that I understand the timings of a workshop and that I know that I can't cover all of this particular corner of OpenStack in 10 minutes. I'd better take a half hour with that. And so, you know, when, when people review it, they're also going to just, you know, do that second check on, is this realistic? Um, you know, definitely show what you know. Um, demonstrate your deep knowledge of the topic. And make sure that um, people understand that you're going to bring value because you know your stuff. So, and, and yeah, and Diane has a lot of tips coming up next for how to, get through any conference proposals. I'd love to see more women at the conference I go to and have that confidence. So Diane, go ahead and, and walk through all of your tips and, and, and helpers. So this is really, um, I, I give a talk often um, just for, for both men and women and for new techies on um, how to get your CFP or call for papers. Um, that's what we uh, acronymize the whole process is, is submitting um, to these sessions. And this basically, if you go to the next slide there, um, I'm going to just walk through what I think are the key things. Um, and Anne touched on it a little bit too. But really one of the key things for me is be relevant. Um, come in, know the context, um, know what release of OpenStack you're working, you know, that's, that's being, going to be talked about. The, know your area of, of expertise um, and work with it. Um, work with uh, whatever flavor of the project that you can integrate into. Um, I think the next slide is what I go on to is the you can advance one, is that you have to really be honest about it. Um, like I work at Red Hat, and I work on a project called OpenShift that runs on top of OpenStack, and I have a corporate master. It's Red Hat, and we have agendas about getting you know visibility of our projects and. Um, the work that we're doing and getting more people to participate in our community and on our projects. So I have an agenda, but the context for the OpenStack conference is really all about OpenStack. And so um, when I'm putting in a presentation to an OpenStack conference, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to say, um, give, give me 
um, uh, an hour of this OpenStack agenda to talk about platform as a service. I'm going to say, um, look at an aspect, and in my case, it's heat that we use to deploy OpenShift, and um, OpenShift just happens to be part of um, the example program that um, our application that gets done. And really, what I'm doing, and when I submit my talk, is I'm, I'm talking and using a use case for heat or um, Kubernetes and Docker or whatever the the new um, this piece of the technology is that's of interest to this um, particular audience. Um, so I'm, I try not to, um, and, and when you're submitting, especially with OpenStack, um, we really try not to select people that are doing vendor pitches. So the best thing to do is acknowledge, don't try and hide it. Um, don't come in and, and blindside the audience with a vendor pitch, but really be honest um, with yourself and in your submission, who you're working for, what the projects are that you're working with, but also try and incorporate um, the pieces of OpenStack that your um, project or product works with. And that, I think that's really key here. Um, Agreed. You know, if, if I could add one thing to that, you know, in the, in the context of OpenStack, the, the project is so wide and so broad that if your talk is about how to make one component of OpenStack run on your specific vendor's hardware, that doesn't really have as broad of an audience, right? So the broader you can make your stuff apply to in the context of OpenStack and less about the particular, let's say, hardware that, you, uh, for the, that is made by the company you work for, uh, the more votes that you're going to get. Uh, as a track chair, uh, I have absolutely been guilty of bumping down uh, the vendor commercials where someone's going to get on stage and tell you why you know, they're the best thing since sliced bread. In, in the context of being I wouldn't relevant, feel is, guilty. <laughs> I, I, I never feel guilty, guilty about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't, I don't really feel guilty. <laughs> uh, I do because people voted on it, but I don't because nobody wants to hear a vendor pitch. Uh, in, the, in the context of being relevant as well, you know, relevancy doesn't mean, hey, this, your talk has to be all about OpenStack, the code. Um, we have done many panels. In the last summit, Diane and I did a gender diversity panel. Um, there's community building. There's stuff that applies just specifically around startup culture. Uh, so as long as it has relevancy to the community and the people of the community, then it is a relevant talk. It doesn't necessarily, your talk doesn't have to be about OpenStack or about the code base or about any one particular project. If it's relevant to OpenStack and the members of OpenStack, then it's a relevant submission. And I was just going to interject that, you know, I had a lot of rack space injection in my proposal, but the track chair said, hey, when you give the talk, make sure you're talking cross clouds. This is about OpenStack clouds. And so I was able to use TriStack. I signed up for an HP cloud account. And so the, the track chairs will keep you honest. We're, we're telling you to be honest, but I'm telling you, your track chairs will keep you honest as well. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's slide on to the next one. So the other one here I think is, um, we touched on this as well a little bit earlier, but um, be confident in your description. Um, talk about where you have expertise, if you're a contributor to the code base, if you led a project. Um, this is really um, the knowledge and confidence. It's really it's very, very much top of mind. We need to know what your expertise is in your bio when you're writing your bio for this be clear on um, what you, um, what, how you've contributed to this project. If you're an end user, um, tell us that. Um, tell us, you know, we love end users. But if you can really be very, um, don't, don't be tentative, I think, is the biggest piece of advice. Don't say, well, I just used this a little bit, but, um, and I think I know this. Be really confident. Um, know your stuff. And I think Nikki was talking earlier today about um, when you're trying to choose what you want for a topic. Pick something that you're passionate about. Um, the worst thing you can do is, is get up there on stage and be monotone about it um, and you not engage the, the, um, the audience. Agreed. You know, when I sit down with engineers, they're like, oh, I need to submit something. I just don't know what to submit. And I say, okay, well, what are you passionate about and what do you work on every day? You know, people take it for granted that they have domain expertise in a particular component of OpenStack. And they're dealing with it every day. They don't think they're, you know, they have any kind of special knowledge. But look, OpenStack is a relatively new technology. Um, the expertise 
uh, is very hard to find in the, the scope of employers who are looking for employees who know this stuff. So chances are, if you're working with OpenStack, you probably know a lot more than others know, and you probably know more than you think you know. So if you're working with something every day, you're also going to have a lot of domain expertise that really helps when you go to present because it's not a topic that's kind of new and fresh to you. If you're working on it every day, then it should be a, a subject matter that you're comfortable with. Yeah, perfect. Next up. So um, this is a, an interesting thing too. If you're a contributor, um, really make sure that you mention that. Um, contributors, a lot of them and are over in the design summit during the regular summit, but contributors definitely get respect and priority. Um, so if you've been working on the project in any aspect, um, organizing, documentation, QA, testing, um, it's not just all about the code. Definitely uh, make sure that you um, Mention that in your bio, um, and in you know, give if, even if you can put a few links into the project that you're going to be talking to in the description, because we we use that when we're validating um, who you know which talks are um, going to be get more respect and get more people into the room and people are going to learn from. So this is a really good good thing to do. The other thing to do is is to, to definitely um, help in the in the organizing of OpenStack events um, and, and make sure that uh, you make yourself available to help out promoting your um, presentation. Next up. So, so say you're not totally 100% confident. Um, one of the things that you can do is tag team. Um, I love this technique. It actually works really good for me because a lot of the times you're giving a presentation and you also need to do a demo. So sometimes I'll, I'll bring along someone to do the demo portion and, and type that because it's, you know, that if anything can go wrong when you're doing a live demo on stage, uh, that's the part that will go wrong. Um, it also helps um, to, you can each carry part of the load of doing the research and creating the presentation. Um, and it's also easier to um, get your presentation and we've got two people who are going to be on the stage and bring two, two people's worth of expertise to the project. So that's a, a good way to do that, especially if maybe you're not, if this is your first time presenting. Next up. Next slide. The other thing that I really like to say is bring a customer. Um, really, um, to anyone, um, there's nothing more compelling than bringing a real user story to an audience. Um, uh, and that, that will probably get you chosen over any dry technical talk on the planet because there's nothing more than we want to, we want to know is how OpenStack's being used, how our tech, the different technologies are being used, what impact it's making on what um, people are doing and then really kind of helping us um, understand better um, what we need to do to make OpenStack um, really rock. And, and that is, I tell you, that's, that's a favorite thing for all track chairs and voting too. Is we want Absolutely. To you know, OpenStack, I, I kind of liken it to kind of a blank canvas. You know, it gives you all the components to do X, Y, Z, but that X, Y, Z, man, I've seen people do things with OpenStack that, uh, that's never been done before. I've seen things that, no one ever thought would be a, a good use case for OpenStack. So the more that people, actual users share their stories, uh, the better it is for the community as a whole. Yeah, I would definitely um, say that as a contributor to OpenStack, those are the ones that I will go back and look for on video and take the time to watch or the user stories. Um, and it really, I find it inspirational. Um, Tim Bell, spe you know, speaking, um, about what they're doing is really helping me continue to work hard on OpenStack. So absolutely bring the customers, bring the people doing cool things with OpenStack. Love that stuff. All righty, next up. All right, so you've got a customer. That was the last suggestion, tag teaming. Panelizing. Um, someone in the chat asked about this earlier. 
Um, yes, you can create a panel and submit a, su a session. The two things that I would say about this is it's, it's a great way to um, get your talk accepted, especially if you bring in your competition. Um, it, it allows for some interesting, lively debates. Um, people always love to, to see um, differences of opinions. Um, and the other thing that I would say is make sure if when you're doing your submission that everybody you put on that panel has already previously agreed to speak with you um, before you submit your pe paper. A number of times people have put in this and then I have put my name on panels and then I find out after the fact um, that I've been accepted to speak on a panel at a conference that I hadn't even planned on going to. So. Um, ask up front and make sure that everybody will. But panelizing is a wonderful way to, um, to get your talk accepted and to bring multiple um, points of view. Uh, we did one at a uh, couple of OpenStax ago that had early day Docker, um, Kubernetes, and OpenShift Paws. We had like three or four things. And, People, and it was great. The room was packed. Everybody, there was an, each of the members of the panel brought their own network of people to the um, presentation. And instead of just everybody coming and listening to me go on and on about heat and how to use heat to deploy this or that, um, we got some really good points of view and a lot of audience engagement. So panelizing is awesome. Yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about a panel too, you know, one, one strategy you might use is reach out to people who have the same role as you at different companies. Um, mm -hmm. One of our, our product managers wanted to do a, a product manager uh, forum submission for Vancouver. And so I, I got on Twitter and I just said, hey, anyone interested in doing a product management session panel at OpenStack? And, and literally within like 10 minutes, I had like nine responses. So there's probably people that also want to panelize and just need to reach out and figure out who their counterparts are at other companies. But there's nothing more exciting, I think, than a, a panel that has competitors in the panel who have yeah. you know, drastically different methodologies and uh, different strategies as they approach OpenStack. Those, those differences in view are kind of what makes OpenStack so awesome. So the, the next slide here is um, really starts to dive into what it is you, you actually have to do. When you're writing these descriptions and you're submitting and picking in titles and creating panels, make sure that your submission is clear and complete. If English is not your first language, we understand that. We get submissions from all over the place. But try and find someone um, to proof um, the presentation. We'll, you know, as if your selection is um, chosen. Um, we definitely will give you a hand um, fixing things if your uh, English is your second language and, and if it shows. So we're really we're, we're good about that. So we don't worry too much about that. But really make sure you get the bios in, a picture in, um, linked into the project in your description. And um, if you click on that um, URL there, um, over at O'Reilly, they have some great sample proposals um, and. I don't know if Allison, who's driving this, can click on that. And we can just pop over and, and take a peek there. I think that click will work. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know if it's live linking. Uh, it's not live linking. Oh. <laughs> it's because you're using PowerPoint, not LibreOffice or Reveal.js. Uh -huh. But here the site is, uh, I think, a really good example of, um, and there's a couple of examples here, about creating a good title, a description that's clear. If your first opening bit really tells me in the first paragraph what this is going to, what the problem is, um, what the talk's going to address, and what the attendees will learn, um, that is really good. Using bullets down the bottom here is great. We're going to read as track chairs hundreds and hundreds of abstracts. So um, don't feel bad about just being bullet and being clear. Um, and just make sure you tell us what the goals are, what the, the points are we're gonna, we're gonna learn here. There's a couple of more here. So this is really, um, I don't know, Annie, um, Ann or um, Nikki, if you wanna jump in here, but I think these are really good examples. Um, I've read some really bad abstracts. Um, I think the worst one, the worst one I ever did. I can't, 
I couldn't anonymize it enough. It was too obvious who it would be to, to share it as an example in this one, but it was a one-liner, something like, um, it wasn't ironic or a neutron. I'm going to talk about, or we're going to talk about neutron um, and give you an update, one line. And then two people from the same company, they didn't have their pictures, they didn't have their bios, they assumed I knew who they were. Um, one of them I did, um, but it was, and, and, and it got voted up because they were from a relatively large company and they were well known, so it might have been a great presentation, but you know, you can't, you can't go on just a one line. So really, this is probably the most important thing you do, is be clear and complete about um, your presentation submission. Okay. Yeah, and the great thing about yeah is that it really says this is a technology presentation. This is about upping your skills. This is about and so these are these can be broken down into they have been precisely applied to the right track. Um, the titles are great. The points are made. You know what you'll learn. I really appreciated this for from O'Reilly for sure. I tend to stay away from like the I. I will do this, you will learn. I, I kind of try to use like, you know, in this session, attendees will instead of you will. Mm -hmm. um, I also like to make sure when you're putting an abstract together that it's focused on the attendee. Like these are people who are going to be voting for your stuff. So make it about what the attendee is going to gain rather than what you are going to give. You know, you can either mm -hmm. say, you know, like, hey, you know, join this session and I'm going to talk about all these things, or you can say, um, in this session, attendees will learn uh, or will gain knowledge and expertise on solving challenges to XYZ. Right? You want to make it really focused on the person who's going to vote and the person who's going to attend versus making it all about you. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's pop back in the slides and see if we can get through this so we can do some Q&A too. Next up. Um, I know we said not to be too cute about your titles, but it's um, you need to get the word out. And tweeting and social media are, are the key ways of getting this out. So if you pick a title, um, make sure that it's something that when you – because the OpenStack um, voting and uh, sharing methodology is totally tweetable. If you click on your submission, it will generate the tweet for you based on the title. So um, Think about that. what that is. If all you say is OpenStack and you tweet OpenStack, then um, that's not a, a, great, um, a great title. It's not going to get you anybody um, to vote for you. So definitely tweet about it, um, but make sure your title is not too cute, but definitely informative enough. Next slide. So um, promote your talk as soon as you submit it. Um, it's a fact of life. Um, just in, in this OpenStack um, conference, in Red Hat Summit, in Dev Nation, and lots and lots of uh, other technology um, conferences that I participate in, it is um, it is voting based um, for the most part of who gets chosen. Some talks it's not, but uh, some conferences it's not. But in this one, you are um, required to do some promotion of your talk. So I say as soon as you submit it, because you should let um, the people within your own company know that you've submitted something. A lot of times, um, you can, a lot of times we submit papers because if we don't get a paper accepted, we um, our companies won't fund us to travel to Hong Kong or Paris or wherever it is um, because they want you to have um, a talk accepted. So we know this, but you also should let. Um, your boss know, the PR team within your company know that you've done this, um, work with your product manager your other, and the other people within your company, as soon as you submit it, let them know because they probably also have um, voting um, rights as well and then you can set it up. Um, we did mention earlier that um, sometimes people can overload, um, so don't try and overload the voting. But um, just <laughs> It's obvious. It's painfully it is obvious. obvious. Don't think you can get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? If if everybody from Red Hat votes for for Diane's next talk, um, then then we know that it's just it's all Red Hat all the time. But you do. And you know, Diane, something you yeah, and something you said reminds me that not just at the promotion phase should you reach out to your um, communications team. I know that 
the idea of building a story is really helpful if you can have, you know, communications people help you build the story very early on. And so I know it's not relevant to this slide, but very much connected to um, you probably have people at your company or people in your circles who can help you uncover the best idea, mm -hmm. right? Tell it as a story. Um, find out what's interesting. Um, and and I've, I, I, don't know how, I don't know if I have like research that orients this way, but that women think, oh, I'm doing this work, but it's only interesting to me. I don't know if anybody else would want to know about it. Well, goodness, go find some people at your company. You can bounce off ideas, and they'll give you honest feedback um, about what's interesting, how to tell it in a way that compels others to hear it. All right. I'm getting disconnected, so I'm not quite sure why oh. I'm saying that. Yes, I have been disconnected, but I'm still on the phone call. So let's I go can to the hear next you. slide. Uh, good. Uh, my picture came right back. There you go. So let's okay. go to the next slide. <laughs> I just got a message. Let's hit up the next slide. And maybe they got disconnected too. Maybe they oh. got disconnected. Oh, there it goes. There you go. There you go. Vote for yourself. I saw it for a half a second. There we go. Um, so yeah, the one thing I always say, especially to women, is um, make sure you vote for yourself. Um, it would be silly if you missed out by one vote and it was yours. Um, so make sure you do, do vote for yourself um, and get others too. So when the voting opens for OpenStack um, after the, all the submissions close, um, go to the page with your submission, tweet it out, send it out in your internal emails, go to the Women of OpenStack um, email list, post it there, let us know that you've submitted something. Um, you do need to get the word out. Um, if your topic is so compelling when I'm reading through 11,000 um, things to think about voting, maybe I will um, uh, vote for you. But the, the idea that, um, that anyone is going to read through all 11,000 and pick the top 100 themselves and vote for those is, is not, it's just not gonna happen. You really do need to get the vote out. Next slide. So um, I keep saying this, and I feel like a little bit like a broken record, but network with your peers. You've got the Women of OpenSAC um, mailing list. I you know, get lots of other, whatever the group is that you or the project or subproject you're working in in OpenStack, whether it's Neutron or Horizon or Ironic or you know if you're working on Docker stuff and Kubernetes stuff like I am and and also platform as a service, branch out and tell everybody you know. Um, there's a lot of people out there. If you're on IRC, um, if you're in um, Slack or any of those things, if you mention it to people, ask them if they um, are going uh, to OpenStack, if they're planning to, you should all be, by the way, you should all be planning on coming to Vancouver. It's my hometown, it's my, um, and, it's, and it's one of the most gorgeous places on earth. So you do wanna be here. Um, <laughs> And make sure you get yourselves here. And this is really, it's, it's not just about making the submission and writing the most awesome abstract. You do have to get um, network with your peers and make sure. The other thing I would say is, I don't think the track chairs are announced for OpenStack, um, but you can look up who are the, the last, um, last year's track chairs, talk to them, um, talk to, look up, look on the videos from the past conferences and see who else talked on that topic and see um, if you can get them to um, contribute to, your com to the conversation about your submission um, and, and do that. That's a great way. And if you, if you have your top 10 that you want people to vote for, tweet out your top 10 and include yourself. I would I would add to the network with your peers too. You know, if if you are one of the fortunate folks whose session gets approved, um, your session fee is actually waived. And a lot of mm -hmm. times we've actually been able to take those passes and the ones that we had already paid for and give those to other people in the company who wanted to go, but uh, maybe there wasn't enough budget. But once you do get to the summit, you know, it's always great. It's a great place to meet other people and share ideas. So many times I've seen people from the same company that uh, end up hanging out together the whole time and they drink together and they go out together and that's great, uh, but this is open source and it's a community and it's really good uh, to get out and meet your peers while you're at the summit and, and just have a different perspective 
on maybe the projects you're working on or how you're consuming or using a technology. That kind of chit chat in the context, that water cooler talk in the context of open source is incredibly valuable. Yeah, so one of, one of the things that's awesome for me is as a community manager and, and a person who's worked on lots of pro virtual projects is this is the one time where I get face-to-face -face time with people that I've been on IRC and chatting with and sharing stuff in GitHub and forking their code and, and I have no idea who these people are. And then they show up and they stand in front of you and, and you go, oh my God, you're so-and-so, you're, you're Mojave Linux, oh no, you're this. It's, it's so awesome to actually put a face to someone who you've been working with from all parts of the globe and they're all coming to OpenStack Summit and it, this, this is really a huge opportunity to branch out and, and make those connections. So, um, and you have more of them than you think. Um, so, and those are the folks that you can also ask to vote for your submission. Next slide. All right. Um, this is key, I think, as well, especially for people who are new. There are a lot of new people in, in um, the OpenStack world at each conference. Um, if you're interested in mentoring, if you're looking for people just to bounce your presentations off, off of, um, we're out here. There's lots of us. Just ask us. Um, the three of us are, that are on this call today um, have, have worked a lot with other people and help and coach them to get um, not just submissions, but to how to contribute code or documentation or just how to get started in OpenStack. It's a big, you know, huge project, um, and mentors are really what help um, get people connected and um, we're definitely out here. You just need to ask. Um, so please, please do so. It's probably the key success factor for participating in OpenStack is finding other people um, that can help you. And um, so yeah, uh, the other thing is uh, we really hope, this is a beautiful picture, this is actually one of my favorite places and it is actually where the conference is going to get take place. It's um, Vancouver in the evening. So I really Ooh, I can't that. wait. You, you just wait. It's just the float planes come in behind there. It's gorgeous. It is actually the green roof. There's a grass roof there. The views from here are just awesome. So I really hope to see you on um, the stage in the upcoming Vancouver um, Summit and at other, uh, other conferences um, around the world too. So please um, do, do submit and um, that would be a great one. You see our faces here. You know, one thing we forgot to mention is when you're submitting your talk for or your submission proposal, there's a place to upload a photo. Um, if you're voting for 1,100 things, uh, chances are the ones with the photos are probably going to stand out more than the little goofy avatar. So make sure you upload a photo because I think it adds uh, a little bit more personality to your session talk. Uh, if you add panelists, as well, make sure that they add a photo and that their bios are updated. Uh, OpenStack will cling on to previous bios, so uh, if you just use your login, it will pull the most recent bio that you submitted if you haven't updated that and you've switched companies or titles or if you've gained different expertise that may not necessarily be reflected. So come back and once you upload everything, double check it. Uh, sometimes the formatting can get a little wonky, especially if you copy paste. So you'll want to come back and do that. But we are here to help. We are here to help review your stuff. We're available on Twitter. Uh, we also have some resource slides here in the deck uh, that have links to great places. One thing we'll add to this before we'll post it is uh, the Paris Summit schedule that has all of the abstracts for all the winning sessions. So if you want to go back and you want to look at those, uh, there's also videos for the past summit on the YouTube channel that you can go back and watch. Uh, especially if you're like interested about the format of a panel or something else like that. Um, somebody asked how track chairs are selected. I actually, uh, I don't have a clear answer for that. I think it's a little bit of nomination. Uh, usually I think the board members kind of discuss it and we'll pull in people who've been speakers in the past or people who are very active in the community. Is there someone on the line from the foundation, Allison or Claire, that can provide some clarity on that question? Um, Claire just stepped out, but we can follow up with the, um, in, in the blog post on how the track chairs are selected and provide that kind of clarification there as well. I, I think a lot of it is um, 
I try, there's so many to do, and so every most of us are so busy that they're looking. They they often um, try and get volunteers to do it too. So I know that, that the past chairs tend to get um, reselected if they're willing to give time. But you can always volunteer um, yourself to be a track chair if you have an area of expertise um, and time to do the the vetting of all of these things. So. Please do um, reach out to the events people at OpenStack. I think it's events at openstack.org. And um, ask any further questions you might have. Um, feel free to reach out to Anne or Nikki or myself. Um, and we'll hope to definitely give you a hand getting things done um, and getting things in on time. And again, uh, February 9th is the cutoff date for submissions for the OpenStack Summit. I know Red Hat's Dev Nation is just got extended to I think the 23rd of January. Um, there's lots lots of great places to submit, and I really hope you will do so. Um, and 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 that we'll see you on stage some someplace soon. So there were a couple of uh, of questions in the chat. Uh, Anne followed up about if you if you want to volunteer as a track chair, you can go to a, email events at openstack.org. Uh, that goes to the foundation. Uh, typically, people who are track chairs have been to previous summits and have been a speaker in a previous summit in the track uh, for which they are a track chair. So it does require some level of domain expertise uh, to be able to be a, a track chair. And of course, they want to make sure that uh, whoever the track chair is, that they have some level of discretion, right? Um, it's, a, it's a pretty arduous task to go through and pick the winning sessions and combine others into a panel. Uh, and so it does require a lot of back and forth uh, with people who have submitted. Um, somebody else asked if you have to have your slides turned in in advance. Um, I have never, I don't think that's the case. I have never turned my slides in uh, in advance and like loaded them up to some kind of master system or something. Uh, typically, you'll bring your laptop. It's always a good idea to, if you have a, a funky connection, to bring an appropriate dongle for your, uh, for your computer, be it a Mac or a PC or whatever. Uh, but you basically can just show up and plug in your computer. Uh, they will always have microphones, both wireless and wired mics. If you're doing a panel, they'll set up the chairs. Uh, so they have all that stuff available for you. You just need to bring your, your actual slide presentation. I've also seen people bring them on USB sticks and give them uh, to the uh, presentation folks in the room, but I, I prefer usually to bring my own computer just to make sure that none of my fonts get wacky, for example. Um, another one, another person on the chat, I know the, the chat may not necessarily show up on the uh, recorded video here after the fact, but I think somebody else had a really good tip. So there's a shout out here to IBM for the awesome napkins at the summit. That was uh, incredibly cool. Uh, what was the other tip? You know, I was oh, going to just walk through. Um, I'm looking at the actual form that you submit. So you have to have a title. There are 17 general topics, so try to select the best fit. But then if you have another topic, you can put that in. Um, you select a level for the presentation, so beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And then the abstract itself is, you know, you can do HTML inside of the, it doesn't have to be plain text. Um, and that's it. Um, someone had asked about the number of words. And honestly, like a rule of thumb for like a blog post even anymore is about 400 to 800 words. So just consider the person who, like me, is really truly going to read 100 submissions, make sure I can get through them, I can understand your point, I can understand what people are going to get out of the session, and just have you know that, what, what do you want to call it, uh, empathy for the reviewers um, when you're reading a bunch of submissions. The, the other pro tip came from Diane. Diane, you had a, a great point. If you're doing a demo, please, 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 please bring a backup of your demo, like a, you know, either some kind of recorded thing or a flash based thing. Uh, we've had instances at OpenStack Summits where keynote speakers had demos fail. And uh, that's never a good situation, so always bring some kind of backup or screenshots if you plan on doing a demo. If you're doing a hands-on lab, make sure you let your attendees know what the requirements are in terms of what they need to bring or what they need to have loaded on their laptops. Like if it requires VirtualBox, you'll want to let attendees know that they should be running you know, VirtualBox version X. Yep, there you go. 
I, yeah, I, too many times my live demos have gone south. So um, having a backup <laughs> video of it, and, and a lot of the times the, the, thing, the reason for the video is because the, the thing that you want to demonstrate takes too long. Um, nobody wants to watch something compile and drip um, on the screen one line at a time. So it is fair game um, to, to create a video and speed it up a little bit on the really dry, boring bit. Um, because we are talking about deploying um, infrastructure, um, some of creating clusters. So um, people talk about incredible fast speeds. It still does take time. So um, if you're, if you're, if it's not cheating to yeah. have a video, it's good. It's good, good practice actually. And Malini had a good point about that. And uh, Malini, you're absolutely right. The network is often overloaded at the summit. Oh, you yeah. know, everyone's oh, yeah. got two or three or four or five devices. I will say. Props to the Open Stack Foundation. Paris connectivity was actually really good, uh, but know. you know you can't always depend on conference Wi-Fi for a demo or or to replay a video. Um, there's there are a number of tools out there. Like if you wanted to play a YouTube video, that you can actually use to download that YouTube video uh, down to your laptop to to have it stored locally, so you're not streaming it from the web. Uh, there's offliberty.net or offliberty.com. O F F Liberty is a is a tool that I use to to be able to uh, to pull down a uh, any YouTube content to my laptop to play. I think there's a, there's another um, not to to wrap this up or anything, but I think there is another webinar that we could do about once your pro your your submission gets accepted, how to make sure you have a, a an awesome presentation, and um, the tips and tricks for that because we could probably talk another hour about all the things we've learned, the mistakes we've made, and the best practices for doing demos. Um, that I think would be an awesome thing to try and do uh, sometimes. Agreed. At least a blog post or something, right? Or maybe em Emily at, at, at the next Women of um, OpenStack um, party. Yeah. Emily, <laughs> you had a really good tip too. Uh, the brown bag sessions. So there, there are a number of quote unquote other speaking opportunities at the summit. Um, people from the Cube are usually there and they'll usually interview people from different companies. Uh, the, the guys from B Brown Bag are always there and they usually do some kind of broadcasted uh, session stuff, usually in a conference room set off to the side. Uh, there are demo theater presentations. I think there were even discussions of having some kind of lightning talk uh, format for a couple hours during this year just in case your talk doesn't get accepted. So there's definitely opportunities if you're not included on the official track to be able to find another avenue to share your message. And so uh, the V Brown Bag guys, uh, they're all on Twitter, uh, but if you have any questions or you're curious about that, reach out to us. Nicholas Chase had a, a, a suggestion on uh, ways to be able to pull, I guess, videos down to your laptop locally. Uh, KeepVid, I think, KeepVid.com is another uh, it's in the chat. KeepVid.com is another way to be able to uh, to locally download a video. So thank you for that suggestion. And the, the the one other thing I would say is make sure you bring your dongle with you. Don't expect anyone to um, have a have the exact dongle you need. If you can, bring one with you. Yeah, because taking your trying to get on Wi-Fi and email your presentation uh, at the last minute on on not so great Wi-Fi is is really difficult to do. Been there, done that. <laughs> Not very fun. All right. All right. Well, if I think people have questions, I think we've we've done it. Um, and I I look forward to seeing everybody in Vancouver, my hometown. And um, if you have any questions about Vancouver or OpenStack Summit that's coming up, let me know, and I will do it my best to to help you get get to Vancouver. Yeah. Yay! Thanks, Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye, guys.